What's good? What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the show, man. Recap with Mo. Well, we're getting ready to get into another episode breakdown of Tyler Perry's The Oval. But before we get into this thing, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss shit snip that's going down, all right? So in the episode we're getting ready to get into is season five, episode number two, titled The Missing Link. Now, the synopsis for this episode states that Sam and Max believe Jason is the missing link in exposing Victoria. They continue to search high and low for his whereabouts. Meanwhile, Eli has been sworn in as president, creating a whirlwind of drama. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this thing. So we start this episode off with um, Nancy and Richard. So they're still at the hospital. In the previous episode, Nancy was asking about this pain, why she has a neck brace on her neck, why is she in the hospital? So she had all of these questions. And of course, Richard was there just to console her and, and try to, you know, make sure she's good. So anyhow, Richard is just checking in. He's trying to make sure she's comfortable. And she was like, please don't touch me. Don't touch me. She starts screaming and she screams to the top of her lungs. And she said, you did this to me. You, you the one that did this to my neck. So all of a sudden the doctor is running in and she was like, he did this to me. He did this. And Richard is like, no, 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 I didn't. Don't say that. Don't do like he ain't want no, <laughs> he didn't want no problems y'all. And you know, the doctor, of course, he has to do his due diligence because that's his job. So he he's asking Richard to leave. Of course, Richard is like, I'm not leaving her. I'm staying right here. So, of course, the doctor leaves and he calls for security. So when security comes in, the security guard is the one that removes Richard from the room. And at this point, it looks like he's been arrested. So from there, we head back over to the hotel where we see Bobby and uh, what's her name, Priscilla. Now, in episode number one, they were supposed to be getting a groove thing on. Unfortunately for, for Bobby, it didn't happen because she started getting a little weak in the knees and she couldn't support herself. So she said, no, I can't do it. I've made a mistake. You know, I can't even say it with my chest any longer. I mean, I just can't do it. So in here, long story short, she's getting ready to leave. Um, Bobby is getting ready to walk her to the door. And of course, you know, Sam comes in with that boom, boom and makes it doom, doom. And next thing you know, Bobby is down on the floor. So everyone was assuming that Bobby, you know, was, you know, unalive at this point. Well, as I thought, he wasn't. So in this episode, we're seeing the aftermath and we're seeing Priscilla actually assisting Bobby off the ground, helping him to the couch. And he takes off his shirt where you see he has these red you know, areas on his chest where he was shot with the rubber bullets. And he tells her that this was just a warning shot, um, trying to tell him specifically to leave my wife alone uh, or the next time it's going to be something else. And it's not going to be rubber. If you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> now it's crazy because rubber protects you, you know, sexually and all of that. But also rubber can be dangerous because, you know, looking at my man's chest right here, it looked like the rubber did an old boy in. And, you know, they say, you know, rubbers are like 99.9%. .9%. I guess this man right here found out that that point. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> let me go on and move on, man. Um, So Bobby... It's like, look, just go ahead and run me some cold water. Um, give me a glass of water. He's giving her all these instructions. And she was like, cool, I'll go do that for you. Woo, woo, woo. So then when she comes back, she's still looking fine as hell. And he's looking at her. But he was like, look, you need to go back to your man. Your man done came over here and boom, boom me. And I need you to go back home before he does something else. And also, you did all of this, you know, because... You know, you wanted to get back at him. You wanted him to feel the same way that you felt. And she was like, I just can't understand why why he would do this. And he was like, you know damn well why he would do this. He loves your ass. That's why he was over here doing it. And he's giving me a warning and he's giving you a warning as well. And you better take your ass home and go ahead and do that laundry and get in that kitchen. Whatever Sam asked you to do, go ahead and do it because we don't want no problems. So anyhow, um, 
We head back over to the White House where we see Max is now greeting Sam and asking him, where the hell were you? Like, where have you been? And he was like, look, man, I'm here, whatever. We need to just go ahead and deal with what we got to deal with right here. And he's like, did you go over to the hotel? So he's still trying to avoid the question. And then all of a sudden he was like, look, you asking the wrong man right here. You need to, if you really want to know anything about this situation, you need to ask Bobby's ass. And, you know, right now he can't ask Bobby because Bobby is sitting there with some, you know, with some red spots on his chest right now. So anyhow, um, we go around the corner and we see um, leaving the room where Hunter is and the doctor is. We see both um, Victoria and Donald exiting the room. And while they're coming out, they're being met by Eli and his um and his detail his um his security detail. So when he comes around the corner, they're like, "Oh shit, here he comes." So anyhow, he's like, "What's good?" Donald's like, "Oh, everything is good. Everything is peachy, right?" And he's like, "Well, how is the president?" He was like, "Oh, he's good. He's gonna be all right." And Victoria is looking at Donald like, "Shut the hell up!" And she's like, "No, let's be honest." No, he's not looking too good. Of course, Donald was feeling some type of way because he had already conveyed to Victoria that they need to keep this shit on the low. Unfortunately, Victoria is on the other side and Donald was seeing this more and more that something just ain't right and he's seeing it and he's putting it all together, right? So Eli's like, look, we do not need all of this to get out. The same stuff that Donald was saying, right? But he said it for a whole different reason. And then he was like, look, this whole situation about Hunter, let's keep it on the low. And, you know, and then he starts to ask questions about the the overdose. And Donald is looking like, how in the hell did you figure this out? I wonder who told you. And when he's stating this, he's looking directly at Victoria's head and Victoria's looking <laughs> she's looking dead at, at Eli like I told you to shut up like I ain't trying to tell you this so you can tell the whole world what I've been giving you so anyhow um Victoria's like look you guys can go ahead and leave and she looks at Donald and she tells him to leave as well and she and Eli are going to stand here and talk I guess and Donald ain't going for it he was like no absolutely not I'm actually going to stay here with your ass <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep my eyes on YouTube. Yeah, because I already know something is up. All right? And y'all got a scheme. Anyhow, um, Max and Sam are having this sidebar conversation. And Max is like, how much longer are we going to have to look um, at Cal? Like, how much longer are we going to have to do this? And ultimately, they're trying to find Jason because they feel like he is the key to all of this, to solve all of this shit. But anyhow, um, Max is like, look, we need to call Bobby. And of course, Sam is like, whatever, man, do whatever you need to do. So, of course, Max calls Bobby to tell him to bring his tail to the White House. And initially, Bobby is like, for what? Like, I'm good. Like, why well, I need to come to the White House? He was like, look, Sam needs to be relieved. And he was like, well, is he up there? And <laughs> and Max is like, well, yeah, he's here. Like, or else he wouldn't need to be relieved. Like, there were a lot of dumb questions on this episode for some damn reason. But anyhow, moving on from there, um, next we see... Um, Oh, yeah. So now let's get back to this whole Victoria situation. So Donald has left the scene at this point, but he left Kyle there to keep his eyes on Victoria. So while Victoria and Kyle are standing right here in front of Hunter's room, um, Victoria is attempting to get under Kyle's skin by like, you know, saying, you know, some things towards him, trying to get into his business. Kyle ain't trying to hear it. And then Victoria goes on about her son, like, why haven't you guys been able to find my son? And you got 24 damn hours to find something out about my son or else. And Kyle is like, what are you saying? Like, what else? What? Like, what are you trying to tell me? And she was like, you'll see. And I guess we will see, right? So next we head over to the Rocky Douchey camp and we see Jason being escorted by Manny by gunpoint. And, you know, he runs into River. Now, River conveys to Manny that, you know, right now the highest is resting and you know how he feels about being interrupted during his rest. So anyhow, he has this whole little conversation with Jason. Now, 
Jason is like, look, y'all cannot keep me here. I don't think Jason understands where he is at this point because he's asking for telephones. You're not going to get it. You're talking about you need to be released. You're not going to get it. And if you are going to be released, it's not going to be in the way you want to be released. So I'm not sure what he's going to be looking for. But anyhow, um, River conveys to him like you in a good spot, like this is a great spot to be. And as a matter of fact, you look like you need to be fed a little bit. So I'm gonna get the elder mother. And we all know the elder mother, um, Marva, is not one to be played with. She's as wicked as they come. And of course, she's going to give him a little bit of, um, I don't even know what type of food it is, but it makes you feel good on the inside. And you forget all of your worries. So he ain't going to have to worry about these problems that he's feeling right now. So anyhow, moving on from there, we see Bobby is now outside of the White House. He's receiving a phone call from Lily. Um, and Lily is like, look, I, I need to really see you in person. Bobby is like, look, we, we good. We don't have to see each other. But he's like, what do you want? So anyhow, you know, since she's not getting nowhere with him at this point, she alludes to the fact that there is a person that's that's unalived in her house right now. And he's like, hold on, wait, like, what are you saying? And she goes in and tells him that um, Dr. Heller, I think that's his name, Officer Heller, I'm sorry, um, Officer Heller, who came over, his intentions were to get rid of Donald. Well, he thought that he got rid of Donald when there was another guy that was in his bed that was there for Donald, and Donald wasn't the one that got popped. So, unfortunately, the man met, he missed, essentially. So, you know, it is what it is. So he was like, oh, OK. But anyhow, like we don't have nothing to talk about. You good. I'm good. We, You made your bed lay in it. So I'm not really sure what her purpose was in calling him, because obviously she knew that it was not going to go down the way that she honestly thought it was going to go in her head. But, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, because Bobby ended up hanging up on her ass. And she was like, for real? Like, this man is obviously done at this time. Like, you need to allow this man to breathe a little bit because of what has went down. And he ain't getting none the other night. So he already pissed off about that. And then he done got popped in the chest by some rubber bullets. So you got to give this brother some time. Right now, he's sensitive. <laughs> Anyhow, moving on from there. Next, we see over at the hospital. Now, you recall that that um, Richard had been arrested or we actually assumed that he was arrested because we saw the security guard walking him out with the handcuffs. Um, but anyhow, the doctor stops the security guard while he's in the middle of the hallway. And he's like, look, go ahead and take the cuffs off of him. And he pretty much has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Richard to let him know, hey, I understand what's going on, you know, and just looking at some of the things that we researched are you familiar with these plants? Are you familiar with this? And Richard is like, no, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. So anyhow, the doctor informs him about a substance that was found in Nancy's pockets. And I was like, well, what in the hell was she involved in? So anyhow, he starts talking about devil's breath and all of this stuff. And I was like, uh-uh, that don't sound too good. You start talking about the devil now. So anyhow, it's a... Um, obviously some type of plan or something that causes you to hallucinate or not just hallucinate, but also do whatever the person that's giving you the plan, it, it, it allows them to be able to control you. And obviously Richard is like, well, she got involved with this cult. Now we're going to talk about that on another video. So I ain't going to, I ain't going to bore y'all with that right now, but I'm intrigued as hell. Like, okay. So she still got the residue in her pockets. Is she still getting it? Like what, what's going on? But anyhow, um, back at the white house though, we see Eli being sworn in. Now Hunter ain't dead. Hunter, we don't even know what's going to go down with Hunter, but anyhow, they're going on with it, right? So Donald and Eli have this little spat between one another. And, you know, Donald is trying to tell him what's about to go down for the day. Eli's like, hold on, wait a minute. Mm -mm, no, let me go ahead and tell you what's about to go down. Like, you are about to be replaced. And Donald's like, what the hell are you talking about? Be replaced. He was like, yeah. And in his head, he was like, this is asinine. Like, 
My boy ain't even dead. Hunter is not dead. He 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 good. He gonna be all right. He gonna come up out of it. So we think, right? We don't really know. But Donald's like, okay, now let's be real. These two men have never liked each other. Donald doesn't trust Eli. Eli doesn't trust nor like Donald. So it is what it is. Um, and then, you know, I'm I'm just thinking outside of the box here. Maybe it's for the good of the team right now, currently in this context, that they do separate. Donald can do his things under the radar so he can figure out what's going on. And then, um, <laughs> then Eli is like, look, let me go ahead and say this real quick. Not just you, but you and your boy, Cal, both of y'all asses. <laughs> he cleaning the house, y'all. He was like, look. Don't even bother going to your office. Don't need to do any of that. Don't go past go. Don't collect $200. You need to just take your ass home. <laughs> I, I, I'll mail it to you. Um, it, Anyhow, so Donald goes to see Cal, who's still standing in front of Hunter's room. And when Donald walks by, Cal can see that Donald is frustrated at this point. And Donald goes in to tell him that you know, we need to figure out what's going on. Um, and he tells Kyle that, look, we got about 24 hours to get this man out of this bed and back up on his feet because some shit is about to go down. So while they're in the midst of their conversation, in walks Alonzo. Now, when Alonzo comes in, he stands directly next to Kyle. And Donald sees him and he says, I'll bring your ass over here, like right here. So when he gets there, Donald's looking directly in Alonzo's eyes. Alonzo is trying to avoid it by all means. And of course, Donald is like, look, what did you do? So long story short, Alonzo goes in and he tells him what he did. He went and got some things for, for Hunter or whatnot. And it was like, what was it? Where did you get it from? So anyhow, he goes on to tell him where he got it from, how he got it, how he stole it from the dealer. Woo, woo, woo. So... Donald's like, hold on, you did all of this, you did it at the pharmacy, that that's a whole backstory there with the pharmacy thing with the president, and then you got, you stole this, like, what's going on? So, long story short, he's like, okay, out of all of that, where is it now? Alonzo is like, look, I don't know where it is, like, I sent it back, you know, and it was just too much all over the board here, like, Alonzo is like a deer in headlights right now. He really doesn't know what's about to go down because Victoria has already threatened his ass. Now he got Donald threatening his ass. These are probably one or two of the top people not to get on your worst side. And unfortunately, Alonzo got both of them. So anyhow, you know, it is what it is, my brother. You should have thought about it before you got into it. So anyhow, <laughs> so we head over to the police station where we see Alan being brought into this room. Now, when he gets into the room, we see him sitting down with Desiree, um, who's the prosecutor, and her partner with her. So they inform him that they are there to assist him, and we're trying to work with you because we know that you were possibly framed in all of this. We're trying to work this out for you. And she goes in and she tells him um, about the president and the overdose, but it's not public. So don't tell nobody. Well, why in the hell did you tell me? Like, if you're trying to get on my good side, I understand. But at the same token, if you don't want nobody else to know, well, why would you tell me? Now it's public because I'm going to tell every damn body, all right? Um, Alan ain't hearing it. He ain't feeling it. But he was throwing off a little bit about what she told him about the overdose and the president. But at the same token, he wants a lawyer. He doesn't want to be involved in this conversation. He's trying to protect himself. I'm, I'm, he's definitely afraid of something. And I guess we'll figure that out quite soon. Um, but anyhow, Desiree, while he's leaving, Desiree receives a phone call. And she tells the individual on the phone, obviously, that, you know, oh boy, didn't accept anything. He didn't listen to anything that she stated. And, you know, he lawyered up. So, you know, he didn't listen to a word. So it is what it is. So from there, we see Victoria and Simone. Now, Victoria goes in and she goes in to see Simone who's sitting down on this cot. Now, when Victoria gets in here, she's throwing all of these shots at her. She's throwing this shot, that shot. And then Victoria finally informs Simone that her husband was just made president. And she was like, hold on, what? And she was like, is Hunter dead? No, he ain't dead, but you know, he's 
he's out of pocket right now. All right. Enough said. But anyhow, I'm just letting you know that your husband was made uh, or sworn in as the president. And she was like, well, how in the hell did that happen without me by his side? Oh, boo, I got that. I was right there with him. I stood on his side. As a matter of damn fact, we look better together than y'all do. She was like, well, what about my kids? And what about our kids and all of this stuff? And Victoria goes in for the... for. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria goes in for the kill once again. She was like, it's funny that you keep talking about what Eli won't do to his kids, but you never mention what he won't do to you. So Simone is sitting here like, oh, hell. But anyhow, Simone is playing a game as well because Victoria is going in. She's throwing blow for blow, shot for shot. And Simone is just taking it. So it seems. So when Victoria finally decides to leave after she done told her that she's going to die. Mm hmm. That's what she said. So anyhow, you know, Victoria walks up out of the room. Now, Simone is in there and she's looking at her as she walks out and she says, that's what you thought. And she pulls off her underneath the bed or something like that, this small recorder. Now, my gears are turning at this point because I'm like, first and foremost, that, that was cold as hell. Let her talk, talk, talk. You do the least talking as possible and allow her to bury herself. All right. And then after that, when the hell you get the recorder from? Did they give you the recorder while they were escorting you to the bunker? Or did you already already have it on you when you fell over the, you know, over the stair rail and shit? Like, when did you have it? So <laughs> I'm just wondering, did they already know something could possibly happen in communication and decided to give it to her just in case so she can protect herself because somebody else doesn't like her as well? So mm, that's a good thought. I'm going to leave it there, though. So anyhow, from there, um, we see Dale coming up to the hospital to visit Kareem. Now, when he walks in the hospital room, he's having this conversation, of course, to Kareem. But it's almost like he's talking to himself because I don't think Kareem can hear anything. But, you know, sometimes when you're in those situations, you can hear. You just can't verbally respond. Right. So, you know, he's telling him all these things and he wants him to know that I want you to get better, but I also want you to get better because I need you to do something for a friend who is currently locked up because she ain't getting out until you can clear the story. So while Dale is sitting there and I'm not sure if he's getting ready to leave, in walks Kareem's cousin. And that's how the episode ends. And Dale is like, oh shit, that's it, man. So Tell me your thoughts down below what you thought about this episode. I'm in good time today. I'm under 25 minutes, so I feel good, man. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this recap. Um, please like and subscribe. Make sure that you stay in the know. Hit that notification button so you don't miss shit snit that's going down over here with Recap with Mo. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.